Today we're gonna do a decent amount of work with Subaru Outback cooling system. In case you didn't see previous videos, this vehicle has 220,000 miles. Not sure if any part of cooling system were replaced before, but there are a bunch of issues. One, this gasket is ripped. Issue number two, this hose is too fat. Same thing on this side. So when it deformed like that, it just shows that it's time to replace it. Another issue not shown now, but I noticed before that this radiator seeps coolant from right here. The lower hose is not in really good shape, but even if it was better looking, I would have replaced it anyway, since I'm gonna be draining coolant and removing the radiator anyway. And since I'll be doing all this down here, I'm gonna also replace the thermostat. So my idea was just replace all that that I just mentioned, but then I found this. As you can see, this pipe is very rusted. Now this vehicle, 170,000 of it was in New York, but what's strange to me is I don't see rust anywhere else, but this specific pipe looks just way too rusted. And that's a coolant line, so I'm gonna replace it as well. My advice for you is if you have a lot of miles or it's time to replace your radiator, coolant or anything related to cooling, just look under the vehicle, under the engine and check that pipe right here. Because if yours is rusted, eventually you'll develop holes in it and gonna start leaking coolant. Here's what I got to do the job. I'll obviously need more than that, more tools I mean, but as far as parts, it's all here. So radiator I decided to go with aftermarket one I found on Amazon was only $58. I believe original radiator cost about $250. I've seen Denzo for about $130, so that would be a good option. But $58 is just too cheap, I couldn't pass the deal. Gonna use Subaru coolant, I believe I'll need two gallons. And I'm gonna use a conditioner. I got two of them for about $11 I think. You just need to use one per coolant system. That's a radiator hose. That's one. That's another. I don't remember the prices now, but I believe they're about $20 each. Coolant, I think, was about $20 per gallon. And all those parts I got from local Subaru dealership. That's a original radiator cup. And that's a thermostat with a gasket. This, I believe, was about $30. This one was, I believe, $10, $15. Instead of using original clamps, I decided to use those stainless steel ones. For the rusted pipe issue I found under the vehicle, I believe this and this was about $80 or so. That's the most expensive part. $65 or $70. That's the actual pipe. It also had a small hose attached to it. And I bought two bolts that hold this pipe in place. They were like 50 cents each. This is good to remove push pins. And this is good to fill a radiator with new coolant. And I'm gonna put Amazon affiliate links at the bottom of this video for all the parts and tools you see here. I'm gonna start by removing a bunch of push pins because I'll need to get access to the radiator. It's crazy how easy it is with this tool. I used to use just a flathead screwdriver. I'm missing one here, but this one will take off as well. Get this thing out. I need to remove those two. Okay, let's see if that's it. Definitely more rust here. And here I think it'll be a good idea to just completely remove this splash guard. We're gonna remove those two bolts, one here, one here, and size is 12 millimeter.
two more push pins on the side they look a little bit different not sure how those come off probably with a smaller screwdriver would be better okay this one we're gonna try with a screwdriver not bad Hopefully that's it and the shield guard will come off. It's also a good time to check everything under the vehicle, see if you have any issues with it. If you see anything leaking, obviously I do, I'm gonna work on that in other videos. Time to drain the coolant fluid and I'll just do it from lower hose. You could do it from here. It's tough to get to it, I think it's much easier to just do it right here. First I'm gonna try with long needle pliers. Good. Looks like it's going well. While it's draining, let's work on CVT lines. So with CVT lines, I'm gonna have to get a bit creative, and I'm gonna I need to pinch right here so that the CVT fluid doesn't leak once I disconnect this. I don't have those small fancier tools, but I do have a couple of vice grips, so I'm gonna use that. And I'm gonna also use microfiber towel so that I don't damage the holes. Okay, looks like it's coming off. Let's start quickly working on this one. Hopefully this one's gonna be a little bit easier. like it's going I'm gonna use same thing microfiber towel and vice grips all right it's all too I'm gonna also disconnect this connector I believe it's going to the radiator fan finally remove connector took a while to figure out how so the way to do it is with a flathead screwdriver this plastic tab from inside you push it out i don't think i'll be able to show you how to remove this one it's just extremely crappy angle to put camera somewhere and the flashlight disconnect it and this one i was actually able to just take off with this push pin or whatever it's called this piece without breaking it and i took it out and i had a little better access and with a screwdriver, with a small flathead screwdriver, I pushed this piece slightly up. And I think at the bottom everything is done. I'm going to remove the upper one. I'm going to remove this 12mm bolt. And remove this one. So I'll take this off. And this, and hopefully a radiator gonna come out. Radiator and fans out. Just to be safe, I'll keep those hoses up for CVT fluid. Radiator does look pretty old. No idea if it's original or not. It looks like it is original. I could be wrong though. Those bolts are pretty rusted. Bolts, nuts. I'm gonna. Spray some WD-40, we'll see if it's gonna work or not. I'm gonna try to get to the thermostat without removing anything else. Well, obviously I'll remove the lower hose. So it looks like there are two 10 millimeter bolts. It does look tough, so just in case I'm going to spray WD-4 in a bunch of places. I'm going to try to lower the exhaust, because it's nearly impossible to remove the thermostat housing. Maybe you could with regular wrench, with flexible head, but it's still pretty tough. So one of the bolts came off pretty easy, other two 
are very stubborn so I'm gonna try to use a breaker bar okay this one looks good next one might have to do same thing on the other side had to use breaker bar to loosen them up a bit let's try now so much more room now so from here you should be able to use regular ratchet with 10 millimeter socket have easy access here easy access here i'm gonna try to use something else and we'll see if it's gonna work Okay, I'm gonna try to use electric ratchet. Okay, now I'm gonna try to take out thermostat. There's a thermostat and a gasket. I don't think it matters if you put thermostat like this, like this, like this. I'll keep it same way and I'll keep this in front but I don't think it really matters obviously this is under, this is on top just by looking at this I see this gasket, internal gasket seem to be broken in a couple places so good thing I'm replacing it I'm gonna use this pipe kind of as a guideline to see what needs to be removed so I can see this right there you definitely need a long needle pliers for this one kind of tough to reach so for now I'm gonna remove this one I use long needle pliers to twist this hose a little bit so let's see if I can remove that now yep came off really tough here to get a good angle but there are two hoses right here one another one you need to disconnect this one right here got really short wise grips so let's see if it's gonna work it's actually did gonna use small wise grips to twist this hose around and looks like it's working so i should be able to remove this hose with no issues Probably one of the toughest parts would be to get to this 10 millimeter bolt. Gonna try to use this very thin wrench, but I don't know how tight that bolt is. It's a very painful process to remove this 10 millimeter bolt. I start by using this, but since it's so tough to reach, it's able to do like this and keep going like this for some reason wouldn't turn. So that already took about probably 15 minutes or so when the bolt got more loose it's not enough room for this I tried this but it's also not really enough room so now I'm gonna work on under the vehicle I'm gonna start by loosening this clamp I'm gonna remove this rusted 10 millimeter bolt Now I'm gonna try to disconnect this. So it looks like when I removed everything at the bottom, on top was removed earlier, this bolt got so loose that when I removed everything else and just pushed on it, this bolt fell. Just had to figure out a way to remove it. So to remove coolant line, I'm gonna have to raise engine a bit and to do that I'm gonna start by removing two nuts one on each side just that one in the middle another time I had to use breaker bar for whatever reason the whole car moving up 
not just the engine and I have no idea why yet I was finally able to figure out why the whole car was lifting up instead of only engine and even though a bunch of places say that you just need to remove one nut on those uh, side engine transmission mounts in my case I had to also remove this one and what I did here is I completely removed two bolts and two nuts and as you can see it's uh, lifting up now and I think good way of doing it this way is in case car jack gonna drop or something engine just gonna fall on the frame now if you lift engine up to here where you can still see the thread you should be able to move that coolant pipe you have to try to move it to the left there you go looks like it might come off from here So now at least I know I'll be able to put a replacement line just like I removed this one. But it'll be very tough for me to, to put nut on here because engine mount bracket is blocking it. So now that engine is raised up a bit, I'm gonna try to remove this top engine mount bracket. Okay, this step was tough. I was able to put ratchet right there, but it was not enough room, so I had to lift the engine further up, which is gonna be tough when I'm gonna lower it because that thread here is not visible anymore so hopefully I'll be able to align it good here's how I did the one at the bottom and I used the extension pipe here because all of them are super tight here's the bottom bolt now we got one more left that should be the last one should be the easiest one Now that the bolt is loosened and have decent access here, I should be able to use this tool. Finally got it out. That wasn't easy at all. So along with the pipe, you can also replace this uh, hose and two bolts. I should have got those a dealership too maybe. Yeah, but maybe I'll use another type of connector. I'm gonna use those instead. Should be fine. If they do fail, if I'll see that they get rusty or something, I could always replace it. It's pretty easy to replace this hose. The tough part is replacing the whole pipe. So I'm gonna put this pipe in. Gonna do it through here. Confirm fitment at the bottom, looks good. And top looks good too. I'm gonna start with this, connect this hose here. So here's how I did this one. Got this bolt on this side so that just easier access. Now I'll put one more here and I'll insert it here. So that's how it looks here. Almost everything ready here. I'm just gonna go on top and confirm that everything lines up. I'm gonna start by hand tightening that bolt over there. So our angle over there just sucks and my neighbor's more in the yard. So that's what I did. 10 millimeter socket, we just tighten this one. Not too tight, just a little bit. Now I'm gonna work on under the vehicle and I'm gonna do this one. Same thing, 10 millimeter, not too tight. Well, I made a stupid mistake and hopefully you learn from my mistake. I was working on this bolt right here, under the vehicle. And since the engine is jerked up a little, it's kind of blocking this exhaust from moving around. So it was a little bit of interference here. And instead of doing it later on, I tried to force this bolt in and I end up stripping or breaking the bolt. Good thing is it's under the vehicle, so once everything back together, I might try to use some bolt remover tool and try to remove it. But all I had to do is just wait, put everything back together, and then gently put this bolt in. 
I lost patience and that's why I have this now. So learn from my mistake. If you can't get the bolt in, just wait, do it when the engine is not lifted anymore. Now that the pipe is secured, I'm gonna install engine mount bracket. I remove the other holes. Hopefully, it will give me a little more room to put that engine mount bracket. And it did, just barely enough. I'm gonna start by hand tightening the top bolt. Now I'm going to hand tighten the bolt at the bottom. I'm going to hand tighten this front bolt over here. I secure the mount bracket. I don't have torque specs and it should be pretty tough to use torque wrench in that location. I just did it really tight. I'm gonna put this one back. I'm really confused what's the purpose of this one. I don't think it does anything really. I'm gonna install this small hose, it goes into that line we just replaced. I can secure this one, I temporarily removed it just to have a better access. Now I'm going to secure this hose, it's not part of the coolant line we replaced, it's another one. I had to remove it just to have a better access. And it looks like it broke. So I'm going to use a replacement here. The replacement I'm using. Okay, good. Just connected that second line too. And that small hose right here. That's connection right there. Now I'm going to slowly lower the vehicle or the engine, but just a little bit, just to make sure everything's aligning. So far so good, I'm gonna keep doing it. Looks like driver's side mount is good, passenger side is good too. Looks like a front mount aligning good as well, and side ones are very good too. I can completely lower the car jack now. I'm gonna secure those mounts, 14 millimeter nut. Gonna use a breaker bar to tighten it just a bit more. So we're all done on this half of the engine. Now let's work a little bit on the front and we're gonna secure front engine mount bracket. Good. Okay, we're ready to install thermostat. Got two bolts. A new original thermostat with a gasket.
thermostat and thermostat housing are installed. So only thing we got left to do here is replace upper lower radiator hose and install new radiator. Gonna install this back. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna move everything from this radiator to the new one. Here's a new radiator, just make sure everything lines up. You don't want those fitment surprises when you're installing it into a vehicle. Gonna remove those fans, hopefully they're not too rusted. This one's good. And mine already have the inside nut, square nut, whatever it's called, already there. So I don't need to move them from here. Pretty rusted, I'll try to take it out. Good. On this one, I'm gonna have to first remove the reservoir. Push this black plastic in and then pull this reservoir out. And I'm gonna wash it to make it look a bit nicer. So let's see if this one's gonna work. Nope. Just end up breaking this one. It's from radiator, so it doesn't matter. Let's see if this would work. Good. And this one. Good. Aligns pretty good. This one's good too. Looks much better. Definitely not perfect, but much better looking than not clean one. Just gonna put a bit of rust reformer. So I let those four 10 millimeter bolts stay in antifreeze coolant fluid for some time it helps to get some of the rust off now i'm gonna secure the radiator fans into the radiator using those four bolts and i'm gonna use anti-seize lubricant let's hand tighten those for now now i'm gonna secure with a impact wrench not too tight Not knowing what I was doing here, I broke this right here. I'm gonna use this zip tight, hopefully, it's gonna do the job. It looks pretty good. Gonna cut off the excess. Now I'm going to work on installing this side fan. Now I'll put coolant reservoir back in. By the way, I tried to clean it. There's still some oil around. It was very tough. So I clean it just as good as I could. I'll put the hose in. This seems a bit loose. I just compared with original radiator and on original one it goes a little bit tighter. Try to put this in just as a safety precaution. I'm not gonna do it too tight. Okay, looks good and the last thing we'll need is this piece and this piece. And I just removed this piece from the old one, just random glue I have. I'm gonna apply just a little bit just so that it would stick. 
and hold till I put it back in the car. Now I'm gonna work on the top piece. Put glue there. Now I'll put this on. Once I secure it, the radiator gonna hold this in place. Okay, we're finally ready to put the radiator assembly into the vehicle. Have everything ready to go here. Make sure it's all clear, nothing is on the way. I also have radiator holders ready and two bolts. And I'm gonna use anti-seize on those bolts as well. Slightly tucked in this tape. Now I can push this towards me. Now I can start securing. I'm gonna use anti-seize here. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Well, since I'm still on top of the engine, I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna remove this upper radiator hose. Here's the old hose. Here's the replacement. To my surprise, Subaru parts original are actually very affordable. So I'm going to try to always use original parts and I'm going to use those clamps instead of the original type. I'm going to try to use a little bit of coolant here. Hopefully it will make it go easier. If not, I might try with engine oil. And that definitely worked. Can secure this one first. Now I'm gonna work on this side. Now let's work under the vehicle. I'm gonna start from this side. I'm gonna remove this protection and remove this clamp. I'm using vice grips to remove this rusty clamp. I'm going to use this one. I'm not going to disconnect the vice grips for the holes yet because I don't want it to start leaking from other side. Same thing on this side. I'm going to remove this rusty clamp. And I'm gonna use this one. Gonna remove this. Now I can remove this pair of ice grips for the scene. Gonna connect this now. And I'm gonna connect this hose radiator out or lower hose. Looks like it goes like this. Just like I did on top, I'm gonna put a little bit of coolant here so that it's gonna slide in easier. Gonna do a little bit of WD-40. Let's see how they're gonna work. Perfect. Secured this. I didn't need WD-40 for this one. So it looks good. Let's disconnect this side as well. So everything here looks good. Be missing just one thing here. Let's connect those. Good. So at the bottom everything's good. Okay, I confirmed everything's secured. Now I'm gonna add coolant. And I'm gonna use uh, Subaru coolant. And I'm gonna use this spill proof funnel kit to make sure there is no air in the system.
never used it before so hopefully I'm doing it correct again Subaru coolant it's already premixed no leaks underneath almost forgot and we also use this conditioner here's the second gallon okay this kit sucks didn't work out because as you can see it's leaking Okay, I'm gonna start the vehicle now and I'm gonna monitor see if there are any leaks anywhere and I'll make sure I have enough coolant in radiator Hey, under the vehicle everything looks good same thing here I really hope this would work unfortunately it didn't not sure if that's gonna do anything but I'll switch gears around still almost full I'm gonna add a bit more And I'm gonna use original new radiator cap. Top portion is good. I'm gonna put this under engine cover, push pins here, bolts here, and push pins here. I'm gonna put the bolt in. Now, other side. I'm gonna put one of those small push pins there. Same thing on this side. As I said before, when you work on a coolant system and you have to replace a radiator or something else, consider replacing additional parts. Obviously, I had to replace the radiator because it was leaking right here. I already threw away other hose. This is upper hose as you can see it had to be replaced as well radiator cap as you can see this gasket is bad and just because I was doing that I decided to replace thermostat and look at it it didn't give me any issues but the gasket was getting old so I'm happy and I replaced that as well so the whole cooling system replacement is completed I know that there is also a PCV union in this area that is known to leak at that high mileage. I'm not gonna be worried about that now because I feel like to replace that I don't need to drain the whole coolant. I might have to drain some but I'm not sure yet. I'm not gonna deal with that since to do that I don't need to remove radiator, I don't need to remove thermostat, I don't really need to get under the vehicle. So I think if it is leaking it'll be another video. I'm gonna put Amazon affiliate link for all products and items I used to get this job done. Let me know if you have any questions, I always try to reply as soon as I can. Now that I finish this, I'm gonna work on changing CVT fluid, differential fluid, and I'll have to change the spark plugs, valve cover gaskets, tube seals, bunch of other stuff. So subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos. Thanks for watching, see you next time.